Oh, Jamie Lee Ross. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I was waiting for someone from the Labor Party to stand up, but they appear to be asleep today. Budget. The member will resume his seat. The member knows that there was confusion earlier when other members didn't take their call. If the member wants to go right through that in the House, we will. But I think he is aware that it is, is his call. He was relatively slow to get up and call, but I gave it to him, notwithstanding a call from my left. He will now leave it. Jamie Lee Ross. Mr Speaker, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to speaking on this budget because, Mr Speaker, this is another budget that is led and delivered by Bill English, the Minister of Finance in this country, which around the world is highlighted as a Minister of Finance that is leading this nation through some difficult times but leading it exceptionally well. Mr Speaker, we have a budget which again delivers for New Zealanders greater growth. We have a budget which again delivers for New Zealanders more jobs. We have again a budget that delivers for New Zealanders relatively low interest rates compared to where they have been in previous years. And Mr Speaker, we have a budget which again delivers greater prosperity for New Zealanders. And Mr Speaker, this side of the House is incredibly proud to be supporting this budget. We just wish the opposition would see the good news and also come across and support it as well. Mr Speaker, the Minister of Finance highlighted during his speech in this debate the incredibly important budget package that's been put together for families. And Mr Speaker, at the end of the day, everything that we do in this House, everything that governments do is about supporting New Zealanders. Right. And the thing that New Zealanders expect from governments the most is support those who are in need and support those who are experiencing hardship. And for the first time in decades, our government is extending and putting more money into benefits for New Zealanders. And Mr Speaker, it is a shame that other members on the other side of the House are not willing to support more money in the pockets of hard-working New Zealanders who need the assistance the most. Mr Speaker, for those families, the 160,000 families that now have, will have $25, $25 more in their pockets, I say to them that they should be thankful that there is support out there and ask themselves why the Labor Party is not prepared to support a budget that does that as well. Mr Speaker, for all of the children out there and their parents who are seeing more or access to early childhood education because of the hundreds of millions of dollars more which this government is putting into early childhood education. I say to them, ask why the Labour Party is not prepared to support more money into the budget in that area either. I say to the New Zealanders who are getting access to more elective surgeries under a health budget, a health budget that is now at $15.9 billion, where we are seeing 50,000 more New Zealanders getting access to elective surgeries. They should be asking themselves why the Labour Party is not prepared to support a budget which delivers that for them. That's a 42 per cent increase on elective surgeries, Mr Speaker, something that New Zealanders are demanding and are proud of. In the education sector, I say to those parents out there who are seeing their children getting better quality education through the lifting of standards in the education system, they should also be asking why the Labour Party and the opposition are not prepared to support this budget which delivers more money for education and is seeing education standards lifting around the country. Mr Speaker, this is a budget with positive economic news. It is a budget that leads to more jobs, greater growth and, Mr Speaker, overall New Zealanders have been better off in the seven years that this government right. has been in office. Absolutely. When we listen to speeches from the other side, you could be led to believe that the economy is going down, that the economy is in trouble, that New Zealand is one of the countries around the world which is struggling. That is absolutely false. Mr Speaker, I think we should remind ourselves of all of the good economic news that has come out in recent times. We've seen 11 straight quarters of job growth. 69,000 more people have jobs compared to last year. We've got a stable economic outlook with growth expected to be between 2 and 2.5%, still one of the fastest growing economies in the OECD. Mr Speaker, there are low increases in the cost of living. Wages are rising faster than inflation. We have high labour market participation. Mr Speaker, these are all good things that New Zealanders are seeing. These are all good things that New Zealanders are experiencing. And Mr Speaker, whilst there is a difficulty for some sectors in the economy, overall New Zealanders are far better off 
than they were seven years ago. And Mr Speaker, we know that the dairy industry, which is a cyclical sector, which goes through ups and downs, which goes through peaks and troughs, is experiencing at the moment some difficult times, but there is still good news on the horizon. Having said that, we shouldn't just believe, as the opposition like to portray, that the whole New Zealand economy is based around dairy, because it is not. It is not, Mr Speaker. And there are sectors in this economy which are doing exceptionally well. Let's take, for example, the ICT sector, which has grown at the rate of 9% a year since 2008 and now contributes 1.7% of GDP. Let's hear stories from that sector. Mr Speaker, international education is now worth $2.85 billion, or around 1.3% of GDP. That sector supports 30,000 Kiwi jobs. That is a good thing for New Zealanders. The wine industry exports were around $1.4 billion in 2014, up 8.2% on 2013. I could go through more through this list, such as high-tech manufacturing, which has grown from a $139 million industry in 1991 to a $1.4 billion industry in 2012. Mr Speaker, tourism again is another good story for this country, where overall tourism is now worth 7% of GDP and is growing strongly, up 7% on last year. Mr Speaker, these are good news stories about New Zealanders which are achieving, about New Zealanders that are seeing the rewards of a fast-growing economy, one of the fastest-growing economies in the OECD. Mr Speaker, these are stories of industries which are employing New Zealanders. More New Zealanders are getting jobs through these industries and through these sectors, and Mr Speaker, New Zealanders are proud of that. Mr Speaker, this government is here because we believe in New Zealanders, we believe in supporting New Zealanders, we believe in the economic prosperity of New Zealanders, and we are seeing the rewards of that growth. Let's not listen to the doomsayers over the other side. Let's not listen to the people that now no longer support free trade, that now no longer support uh, a bipartisan approach to the Reserve Bank, who now no longer support um, good fiscal discipline, because they are opposed to all of those things that we support and are implementing through this budget. I have to say, Mr Speaker, when one looks at the track record of the 2000s and compares it to the track record under this government for the past seven years, the contrasts are staggering. And Mr Speaker, let's remind ourselves and always remember that when we talk about, for example, housing affordability, where interest rates were in 2008, 11%. Mr Speaker, if we want to talk about um, an export sector going into recession or having difficulties, let's re remember that the export sector went into recession in 2005 under Labor right. during a global boom. Yep. Let's remember, Mr Speaker, that before the rest of the world suffered the global financial crisis, this country went into recession in 2007, a year before that global financial crisis. So when we have Andrew Little, when we have Grant Robertson on their hind legs saying that they would do so much better than Bill English, that they would do so much better than John Key, the track record of Labor is not successful. The track record of Labor pales in comparison to this government. And Mr Speaker, as my colleague Scott Simpson says, it is appalling compared to the great results we're seeing delivered under this government. Mr Speaker, I finally just want to touch on trade a bit further, because it is something that was considered during the estimates process. It is something that is considered, uh, has been considered uh, by this House during the, uh, the debate and this, this uh, budget debate. And, Mr Speaker, I have to say it saddens me to see that there are parties on the other side that uh, have been marching on, on the weekend, that have been opposed to trade, that are no longer prepared to support free trade, because, Mr Speaker, there are thousands of New Zealanders who in the future uh, will gain jobs under greater free trade opportunities, just as in the past thousands, tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands have gained greater jobs through greater free trade opportunities. Greater free trade opportunities that the Labour Party has supported and implemented in the past. And so I say to people like Annette King, I say to people like Fletcher Tabuto, 
don't do the wrong thing. Don't start to become opposed to free trade because, Mr Speaker, economic opportunities for Order. New Zealanders await with greater access to markets abroad. And, Mr Speaker, that is a good thing for New Zealand. This budget is a good thing for New Zealand. That's why this side of the House supports Excellent. it. The Honourable Annette King.